It's officially time to kick off NAB AFLW Season 7, and there are just so many players we can't wait to watch. It's Jordan Keneal here, and on the scouting report this week, we're going to take a look at some of the most underrated players who could be set for breakout years. I won't lie, the original shortlist was at 15 players long, but I've come up with a group of five who you should really keep a close eye on. Fremantle is set to look completely different this year, with Gemma Houghton now gone and injuries to Cara and Ebony Antonio. It's worth reading Gemma Bastiani's piece on women's.afl about the new look Dockers for an even deeper dive. But for now, let's just focus on a player who can fill a void in the midfield. Dana East is an incredibly tough young player who just tackles with ferocity. You've got to appreciate how she can just go again and again and again with multiple efforts. Dana has clearly learned a heap from Kiara Bowers, and it's probably unfair to hand her the mini turbo label, but you can see why the comparisons are drawn. Her hands are super quick in traffic, and she's also shown that she can impact the game on the outside as well. You've got to love how unselfish she is too. This one was touched so the mark didn't count, but she immediately puts a block on so Ebony Antonio could kick this goal. Dana started to really flourish towards the end of last season, and she certainly looks like she can get to another level with more opportunities. Moving along to a former docker now, who probably has laid claim to the most underrated player title in the competition for a long time, and that's Steph Kane. Steph has been named Essendon's co-captain, alongside Bonnie Too Good, and from all reports, she has been torching at her training. Kane has been one of the competition's best wingers for a while, but during her time at Fremantle, coach Trent Cooper would basically use her to fill up any role he needed when he had to make a change on field. It'll be really interesting to see where Essendon coach Natalie Wood deploys Kane. Is it as a wing? She's got the strength, ball winning nous, and a heap of spin moves to work as a clearance winning midfielder. She can also read the flight of the ball really well and has pace so running off halfback could also work. I cannot stress enough how impressive it is that she can absolutely nail these kicks at top speed. When you consider that, plus her strength and versatility, it really makes her one of those players where you almost wish you had 20 clones of her. She can really do it all. If putting Steph Kane on this list feels a little bit like we're cheating the exercise, then putting Greta Bodie on feels much the same way. Bodie is one of the better players in the competition, but she just doesn't get talked at it bad enough. Maybe that's due to how many great names she plays alongside of Brisbane. She was one of four Lions to make the All-Australian initial squad of 40 last season, but she was the only one to miss the team from that group. There's definitely a chance for her to use that as a motivation for this season and take the competition by the scruff of the neck. Her highlight reel is honestly insane. This had to be the assist of the year. She'll run to 30, she'll run to 25, she'll give it to Hotter. What a wonderful team goal. For me, the most technically pleasing aspect of her game is her body work up forward. She's so good at nudging her defender out of the way and really protects the ball drop zone well. Bodie has plenty of speed and smarts on the lead too, and finishes her opportunities well. And she's also capable of some truly stunning stuff. North Melbourne's Bella Eddy has started to really own the wing thanks to her excellent running capacity. She's predominantly an outside player and treats her role with discipline. You can see here just how wide she sticks as a wing and doesn't really get drawn into the congestion. Kicking efficiency is clearly Eddie's draw card. She's really sharp over that 20 to 30 metre range and can really cut games open with those stab kicks. She's also a really long kick of the footy, which really helps her disposal efficiency. Champion data rates long kicks that go to contests as effective ones, even if your teammate doesn't necessarily mark it. So that's been a calling card of hers when she's moved into a more contested role. She's pretty clean with her hands at ground level, but she also can just boot it a mile off a step. Sarah Hartwig is a disciplined defender that's got all the tools to get to the next level. Defensively, I reckon she's brilliant at ground level. Hartwig knows how to put an arm across to block the forwards run without giving away a free kick, and she also has the speed and size to play on almost anyone. She's got chase down tackles for days too. Hartwig really backs in her kicking and takes the game on with Dare, something coach Nathan Burke has been preaching for a long time. She's also got the ability to swing forward, Watch her take this one going back, and then tuck the footy under the arm and just jet off. Alright, if there's anyone you think I've missed, let me know in the comments. And make sure you please subscribe to the AFLW YouTube. Catch you at the footy.